Looking down at downtown Oklahoma City, we are set. Baylor, Iowa State, the top two seeds in the tournament. Baylor number one in the country for the first time since 2013. Nine consecutive 30-win seasons. Iowa State and Baylor are playing for this. Iowa State, 25 wins on the year. First 25-win seasons since 2009-2010. Most Big 12 Conference regular season games in their history, wins in their history. Brenda, I tell you, look at both of these teams, and I think Mike made a great point to Monica. How do you get by the fact that they are Baylor? We talked to some of the players yesterday and today about that. Forget about the jersey, you've got to play them, but they know who Baylor is. Well, everybody in the Big 12 plays each other twice, so this is the third time the Cyclones will be meeting Baylor this year. Bridget Carlton, along with Alexa Middleton, have had good games against them. It's important to get everybody else involved in this game today. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. You go with the people who got you there. Both teams, same starting five. Carlton, Jones, Middleton, Wise, Scott. A couple of those need to step up more than just Carlton and Wise. Jackson, Landrum, Richards, Cox, and Brown. A very balanced team. Four players and double figures for the Lady Bears of Baylor. Our officials, we have a veteran officiating crew, outstanding, Dee Kantner, Tyna Napier, Mark Zentz. And there we take a look at Bill Fenley, the Dean of Big 12 Coaches, took over the number 13 spot in the national rankings today. Already set to go to the NCAA tournament. And Kim Mulkey, you see her record in the Big 12 tournament, 41 and nine. She has the long winning record She's also nominated for a Coach of the Year Award. Kim Mulkey has done an incredible job for the Lady Bears of Baylor. And a decidedly Baylor crowd, although short in numbers, not short, there's a lot of them here, but the Iowa State fans will probably be just as loud as the Baylor fans tonight. And we are underway. Right down to Kalani Brown at the beginning. First possession, Iowa State does not double Brown, and she misses her first shot. Unusual for Brown. Baylor, or Iowa State wants to play fast when they can and play slow when they can. They want to control the pace, almost like in a football term, shorten the game down. Middleton, she was hot last night, 24 versus Texas, gets the first two. And she is playing with confidence right now. The transfer point guard doing such a good job for Iowa State this year. And uh, Baylor comes right back and answers. Again, the one-two punch on the inside. Well, Cox was not double teamed either, and she turned hard into the paint to, to go right at the heart of the defense. Decided size advantage for Baylor, typically, but especially against this Iowa State team. One of the goals of Baylor coming into the game, don't give Bridget Carlton any shots the first five minutes. Richards picks her pocket. It's a sprint. Richards wins. Nice defense by Richards. She has defended the best players in this conference, and she has been lined up against Bridget Carlton each time they've met. Now, Bridget Carlton has scored 28 points in each of the first two mm -hmm. meetings against Baylor this year. Richards doing a good job on her. Carlton's one that can go scoreless for about 10 minutes, and all of a sudden she goes on a little run herself. Gets her own shot over Kalani Brown, a little strong. Kalani Brown gets it, runs into Kristen Scott. Scott comes up limping a little bit, but it's Dee Dee Richards with the steal. I think the two bigs may have hit knees, but looking over the screen, Dee Dee Richards gets into place and then just strips the ball away from Bridget Carlton is off to the races for the score. And Scott's going to go out. Meredith Burkhall will check into the lineup, the senior out of Urbandale, Iowa who's given Iowa State outstanding minutes in this tournament. And, and she is a player that has a little more size inside to contend with Brown. Kristen Scott, on the other hand, can stretch the defense better from three-point range. Inside, Kalani Brown. All three possessions for Baylor, they have gone to their bigs, to their strength. Well, once again, what Brenda mentioned at the open, just the points in the paint for Baylor. Bill Fenley calls him kind of a wishbone offense. They just want to bang it inside. Burke call for three. Nicks the front of the rim. Here comes Richards. Landrum on the left side. Spots up. Let's it fly. 
Landrum is an excellent three-point shooter, comes up short on that. You can really feel the energy from the crowd right now for both teams. Emotion is high, but it comes down to execution. Wise, Kalani Brown picks her up on the switch. Jones, nice step inside, Landrum comes out with it. Baylor runs immediately after the rebound. Well, they are so good at pushing out. Good defensive transition that time for the Cyclones. Richards gets away inside. Carlton taps it. I think Burkhall may have hit it last, and she did. Let's talk about the key advantages. Well, it's what we've been talking about. Arc for triumph. You have to shoot beyond the arc if you're the three-point shooting team from Iowa State. That's how they can equalize the paint points and the pace of Baylor. That's going to be an offensive foul away from the basketball. That'll be on Kalani Brown. And that's not the way Kim Mulkey Go. wants her star to pick up a foul. Does not want Brown to be in foul trouble. She picked up two fouls early in the second or second foul early in the second quarter yesterday in the semifinals. Iowa State looking for more scoring be besides Carlton and Middleton. They have 66% of the points in the tournament. That's a traveling call. We'll go the other way. Kristen Scott back into the game when they played that game in Ames and you and I were there. I thought Scott played tentative in that game. Right. So it's a good sign that she put the ball on the floor to try to take it at Brown, but has to get her footwork under control to have the opportunity to get the good shot. Baylor shooting 51% of the tournament wise. That's a tough cover for her with Cox on top Landrum. Beautiful ball movement. Chloe Jackson from the corner. Well, you see. Bridget Carlton playing the same defense on Dee Dee Richards that she has in the last two matchups between these two. She will leave and double team. Left Richards open, recovered, but then Chloe Jackson got open on the outside. And then Jones right down the right side for two. Jones hasn't played well against Baylor either, right. so that's a good sign for Iowa State. Anybody scoring besides Middleton and Carlton is a positive for Iowa State. In fact, Jones just one of seven shooting in two, ga two games versus the Lady Bears. Cox, Jackson is all alone on the near side. Cox takes it strong, takes a swipe at it. Jones got it. Wise on the left side. They get it to Middleton. Madison Wise, she knew that was out the second it left her hand. Madison Wise had her shot blocked in a magnificent way by Lauren Cox the first time these two met in Waco. And you have to think that it's in the back of the mind of Madison Wise when she shoots against Baylor. Now, Lauren Cox had a great game against Kansas State. Two assists shy of a triple-double. She had 18 points, 15 rebounds, and eight assists. Gives Baylor the six-point advantage. Tough shot, Middleton got it. Got around a couple of screens, though. Had her defender, Landrum, chasing her and made a good decision to pull up before she got to the bigs. Middleton with four of Baylor's six points. See how Carlton lays off Dee Dee Richards to front Kalani Brown. Scott trying to keep that right arm on him. Opens up the right side, and Jackson takes advantage of it. Iowa State trying to switch on those screens, and the player switching there not quick enough, as that's a nice turn of the corner for the layup. Chloe Jackson is so poised with the basketball, so heady with the basketball. Scott has Kalani Brown on her. Scott, tough fall away. Mm. No. Possession arrow will belong to Iowa State. Inez Nezakwa will check into Iowa State, but first we'll take a break with Baylor leading by six. Stacey Dale's back with you guys in Oklahoma City. Baylor 12, Iowa State 6. Baylor head coach Kim Mulkey says the most improved player on her team, get this, junior guard Juicy Landrum. Let's go look at the Fox Vision and show you why. And here's a big reason, folks. It's her, been her ability to step out and hit that three-point shot. And you see the penetration here from Moon Erson. And she is on an island. She sees the sag in defense. And so important, Brenda Van Langen, to take a little pressure off of that one-two punch inside with Lauren Jackson. And Kalani Brown, she is averaging 11, guys. She's nearly doubled her point total from a season ago. And she's doing it defensively, too. 
And she keeps the defense honest by stretching them out. She is that three-point threat on the perimeter for Baylor. All right, now Baylor is dominating points in the paint. They continue just to pound it on the inside. And Kim Mulkey got her wish almost. They kept Bridget Carlton without a field goal attempt for the first five minutes. Only had really one. That's a travel call. Go the other way with it. That's not good for Bill Finley because Baylor has hit their last three field goals. Baylor has won national titles in 2005, 2012. Is the seven-year number going to hit again in 19? Well, that's what they hope. They are projected to be the number one, number one seed. They have been number one in the nation all year for a reason. Kim Mulkey calls this her most complete and balanced team that she has had. And you've got to keep that in perspective because they lost their starting point guard before the season even began. Chloe Jackson playing the point. Never had played point before. Carlton can't get a shot off. Burkhoff airballs it. 6-0 run for the Lady Bears over the last 130. And a foul away from the basketball. And so good ball movement for Baylor. The toss here inside and then the cut for Chloe Jackson just finds a crease in the defense and they've done a good job of either using ball screens or just the handoff rubs mm -hmm. there to be able to get to the rim as well as passing it and pounding it inside to Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown. Cox now trying to post up. Wise is leaning on her. Now Carlton fronts Cox. Now they just play her straight up. So Cox turns away from it. Iowa State has not scored in over two minutes. Here's Carlton looking for her first field goal. Doesn't get it. What's also amazing is Iowa State has yet to hit a three-point attempt. Chloe Jackson. Kalani Brown. No. Cox keeps it up high. Draws the contact in the foul. Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox are absolutely relentless on the offensive boards. They get themselves into position, and it is very difficult to block them out and keep them away. And you can see even there are four jerseys from Iowa State in the paint. The two from Baylor outsizing them, getting the ball, keeping it up high, and then drawing the foul. Not too shabby, 64 and two as a starter. You combine that with Kalani Brown. She's 130 and nine at Baylor. Pretty good one-two punch. And you talked about the offensive rebounding at Baylor, 19.5 a game. That is astronomical. That's in the tournament. And they pound. They, oh, they, get, they get in there, and as high of a percentage as they shoot, there aren't that many offensive rebounds to be had, but they collect most of them. That's why Bill Fenley was telling his team today, you've got to be ready to shoot. You've got to be decisive when you do it. They can't find anything right now. The drought closing in on three minutes for Iowa State. The length of the Baylor defense causing problems yet again. It does for so many opponents. But Iowa State not able to set the screens and get the players open that they need to. You mentioned they haven't made a three yet. The right people haven't shot the three yet because right. Baylor is not allowing them to. That was a three-second call. One of the keys for Bill Fenley coming into this game was no droughts. Well, they're in a three-minute and 15-second one now. He sees what Baylor does when you go to the drought. Then you get the first three and the first field goal made from Bridget Carlton. Dee Dee Richards claps her hands together. She says, I know better than that. But you have to respect Carlton's ability to put the ball on the floor as well as hit the three. Middleton, oh, nice move. Season opening, the reverse, got it. Middleton was six in the ball game already. When you can get to the paint against Baylor, you have to take advantage. And I thought Middleton almost overshot that ball, but she was under control enough to get a good look. And Kalani Brown stepped out of bounds. Good defense by the Cyclones. The three-point shot from Carlton got them going. Look at Dee Dee Richards gives her just a little bit of a cushion. The player of the year raises up and hits a three, and then Middleton with a little hesitation move and goes to the opposite side of the rim. So they get a couple of scores, two possessions in a row. Not that one, but they also got a couple of stops. They got a little momentum building. Landrum to Jackson, baseline jumper. Carlton, nice job boxing out Richards. And Kalani Brown didn't even make it over half court that time and is holding her side right now. 
That's why Kim Mulkey's going to go to the benches. Carlton on the drive. She just split Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox to make that shot. That's bold and strong. Iowa State fans love it. They're on a 7-0 run. Carlton leaving Richards to double. Now Iowa State shifting to a zone here as the shot clock winds down. This is what Bill Finley wanted them to do at the end of the shot clock. And Jackson looking who to throw it to, and they run out the shot clock. That's because of the shift to the zone in the middle of the defensive possession. Jim Mulkey does not like that. They actually worked on a lot of what Iowa State is doing today. They did that this morning in shoot around. Well, you got to keep attacking no matter what defense exactly. it is. And Jackson just throws. Carlton, the scoop, no. That's going to end the first quarter of play. And what a first quarter we had. Baylor went on a run. Then Iowa State closes out the first 10 on a 7 0 run. We've played one of the Big 12 championship in Oklahoma City. Baylor leads Iowa State by five. Mike, thank you very much. Look forward to you and Monica at halftime. Baylor started the first half eight of 12 shooting. They're only four of their last 15. Iowa State's defense has frustrated Baylor at times tonight. And Kim Mulkey knows they just got to keep plugging away. But Iowa State's got to get going again. Without a basket for 244, Carlton. And that will be another turnover. And no Carlton, place to go. No, no place to go. And should have had that presence. No, the clock ticking in her mind. My foot's in the lane. I got to get a shot up within three seconds. But was looking for her teammates to cut. I didn't see anybody really cutting towards her or around her. Yeah, I think that's what she was talking to her yeah. teammates about. Dee Dee Richards planks it. Carlton the rebound. Four-point lead. Burkhall waits for Carlton to get clear. Dee Dee Richards fighting hard. Staying with Carlton. Mismatch inside. Burkhall is on Moon Urson. Oh, and then Nezakwa travels with it. Cox will come back into the lineup for Baylor. Richards will go out. Missed opportunity oh, for time. Iowa State. Iowa State, four turnovers now the last three and a half minutes. So they go back to the big lineup. Lauren Cox is in. She's playing the three position right now. Nice job, Middleton. Iowa State does such a good job of taking away passing lanes. Smith with a little flick of the wrist. Nezakwa the rebound. She was surprised when Bill Finley told her today that she was going to play. They really want to keep her on top of the zone defensively. Middleton, no, the three. Smith pulls it away. Third rebound for the freshman. Icing the screen on the side there was Middleton. And then Kalani Brown with her third field goal made of the ball game. That's a good adjustment. Iowa State icing that side ball screen, forcing it to the baseline. So Jackson just gave it up to Brown. And tell you what, Iowa State would rather have Kalani Brown shoot those 15, 18 foot shots than to be inside. But she has that ability to hit the face up. That's what Bill Finley told his troops today. Middleton tried to work off the screen. Urson goes through it. Middleton, no. Rebound, that's going to be a foul. Let's check in with Stacey Dales. Well, Ron, oftentimes with Baylor, the name on the jersey really can defeat you before the game. It's not the case with Iowa State here tonight. I talked to Bridget Carlson just before the game, and she said they truly believe they can knock Baylor off here. They want to make a run. They feel like they're on a run, and she said this is the tightest team I've ever been a part of at Iowa State. They have great chemistry, Brenda. They really do. And, you know, we had their game against Baylor in Ames earlier this year as Jackson hits that jumper. And Iowa State felt that way in that game. And they were well prepared and confident, but they didn't hit their first couple of shots and they were deflated. Today, they didn't hit their first couple of shots and they were able to make a run. But right now, they've got to stop Baylor's run. And the Baylor run is 8 0. 
Carlton. Cox with a rejection. Jones keeps it alive. Shot clock didn't reset. Five to shoot. Middleton. They switch. Smith goes on her. Burkhall's got to throw it up. Doesn't get it. Urson, good job of the rebound. Throws it into the hands of Burkhall. And that game at Iowa State, too. Bill Finley got a technical, and that seemed to fire up his team as Burkhall goes inside. Well, there's a bonus basket that Bill Finley never yeah. anticipated. Meredith Burkhall gets the steal at half court, throws it to Nezikwa. Nezikwa throws it back to Burkhall, and she scores and is fouled. I am quite sure that play is not in Bill Finley's playbook. He's got a lot of plays in his playbook, but that one is not that's a bonus basket for the Cyclones. I wish I would have been looking at the Dean when that happened. He just that probably was we'll looking right there like what? <laughs> we'll take it. It doesn't matter. No style points in basketball. Lead is five for Baylor. They once again led by a dozen in the opening quarter. Final 50 seconds here in the half. Fun first half. Cox Burkhall leans on her throws it up too hard. Pretty good defense by Meredith Burkhoff. I, I think it really was. And Lauren Cox just is not getting herself squared up on her shots. So unusual. And remember, both these teams are playing their third game in three days. Iowa State just won for their last seven. Middleton works off the pick. Thought she was going to step back for the three. Burkhoff. Rebound. Everybody fights for it. Loose on the ground. Jackson comes out of the pack. She's got Brown and Smith. Cox left open. Doesn't get it. Rebound. That's going to do it for the first half. What a first half we had. Both teams with 6-0 runs. Both teams with some pretty good shooting. Both teams with a lot of energy. Stacy standing by with Kim Mulkey. Well, Coach, I just saw you say Lauren Cox has got a score in this basketball game. Well, she says she's getting fouled, you know, so I can't, you know, I trust that kid. Um, we're not doing a good job. Chloe Jackson's not looking at the shot clock. She should have been the one shooting that shot and not put Cox in that position. She had three on two, deliver the ball, go score it. Um, isn't this fun? It's awesome. Coach, <laughs> quickly, what do you like about your defense on Carlson and their shooters? Well, I think we're guarding people defensively. We're just not very good offensively, but it could be because they're good defensively tonight. Thanks, Coach. Well, Carlton, 2 of 7 shooting. Cox, 2 of 8. Baylor, 29-0 when they lead at intermission. Halfway home in the Big 12 title game. Other side of the break, it'll be Mike and Monica from our studios. Two quarters remain in the Big 12 championship game from Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City. Iowa State trailing by five. Stacy caught up with Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley a moment ago. Coach Fenley, you're only down five. What did you like about your defense? Pretty good. I, I thought we played hard, Stacy. I told the team before the game we were not going to call timeout in the first quarter. I don't care what the score was. Just we got to fight through it. We're not going to we're not going to panic and call timeout. I thought our kids did a great job of getting through the first quarter. Our offense is a little sketchy, but they, that, that team is really hard to score on, man. I'm telling you. Um, but we're competing and doing the best we can. We're in the game. It's been fun so far. And hopefully we can compete the last 20. Talk about scoring. How do you get Bridget going? How do you get Madison Wise going? Yeah, Maddie's got to shoot the ball. She's thinking it too much. Our spacing's got to get better when, when Bridget drives to kick it. And we got to get Kristen Scott back in the game and open up the court a little bit. Bill, thanks. All right, Scott played only five minutes. Wise was 0 for 3 in two and a half games versus Baylor this year. Wise now 0 for 11 shooting against the Lady Bears. Jones. Big hard drive and is fouled on the play by Chloe Jackson. And you know, when uh, Bill was talking, we look at it again. Bill was talking to us today about you've got to get somebody else to score. And then Scott is a big part of that. Scott is she had the two fouls, but I've liked the way Ashley Jones has played with aggression taking the ball to the basket 
but how much do the, you know, we don't have a lot of foul trouble, but the two fouls on Juicy Landrum mm -hmm. for Baylor takes them out of it a little bit of an offensive rhythm. And for Kristen Scott for Iowa State. And you can see Middleton coming off that great game of 24 versus Texas already with 11. Smith comes off the bench to get eight points. That was big for Baylor. Baylor got good looks in that opening half. They just didn't finish a lot of them. Yeah, Iowa State holding Baylor to just 42% shooting in the first half. I say just because they typically average over 50% per game. 51% of the tournament to be exact. Kalani Brown muscles her way up. Had a lot of Iowa State jerseys on her. Kristen Scott stayed there with her hands up. Just good position defense. Carlton brought the double. And then a foul away from the basketball. Here's that double team we talked about. Well, that's unfortunate for Iowa State because Bridget Carlton hit the three. So here's the double from Carlton. She kind of stays away, and then as the move is starting to be made, she just goes and puts her hand straight up. Good, good double team. She's going to just go double team at times and fake it at other times and try to keep Brown off balance. And Brenda, Coach Fennelly said today at shoot-around, that sooner or later you got to cover each other's tails. It's a lesson in life, he said, but you're going to have to do it here against Baylor. And he said, once you make a decision, you have got to commit and you've got to go. And those early double teams effective early in this game. Well, Scott just picked up her third personal foul. That was, that's going to hurt Iowa State. Burkhall does give him good minutes, but Scott gives him so much offense. She sits down. Lauren Cox went barreling in to aggressively get the rebound, and Scott picked up the foul. Cox launches on the rebound. Off the glass, can't finish again. The shot chart, chart for Baylor would show a lot of shots missed in the paint today. Carlton throws it away. So Lauren Cox being extra aggressive here early and goes right at it. And Kristen Scott, I guess, gets the foul when she comes down on the arm of Cox, but you can see Cox is trying to get herself into the game because she just hasn't been able to hit shots. Now she works on wise. This time she uses the height to her advantage. Took her time, kept the ball up high, got her shoulders squared to the backboard. Three for ten shooting, eight points for Cox. Lead is at five. Middleton wants Burkhall to set the pick. Jackson goes right through it. Middleton uses the body. Archie glad the rim is round, mm -hmm. Alexa. Nice little finger roll at the end. She has just been relentless, attacking the paint with confidence. She is playing a tournament of her life. Jackson, no. Wise pulls it down. Good defense by Wise on the switch. Put a hand up, made it tough. A contested shot for Jackson. Carlton. Urson puts the hand up, but Carlton knocks it down. And that was good. That was good hands by Bridget Carlton, because that ball was loose. That oh, could yeah. have very easily gone Baylor's way, and instead, Carlton just scoops it up and shoots it all in one motion for the basket. Landrum with the driving layup. And the foul. Well, nobody on the weak side was prepared to come over and help side position, and Landrum really took good advantage. They're trying to ice those screens, keeping them on that side of the court, but Burkhall needs to play off a little bit, and the help side defense needs to know if you're icing, which means you're isolating right. on that side and forcing to the baseline, you've got to come over because she's going to be driving to the basket. Bring the help. Juicy Landrum, and the three of us were talking earlier today about the MVP, and so much is made of, of the bigs, and rightly so, but boy, I tell you, we have seen Juicy Landrum this season step up big time. Her confidence was through the roof at the start of the season. Middleton very active. Carlton on Urson, that's a mismatch. Urson's got some hops, though. Carlton shoots over her. And that's posting up. Carlton at 6-1 with the size advantage over Urson, who's just 5-6. And still, nice little step back move to create mm -hmm. some space. Kalani tries to put the right shoulder down, doesn't get it. Ray Johnson, who's checked into the lineup, pulls down the rebound. Iowa State with a chance to tie or take the lead. 
Carlton picked up her dribble, maybe a little too soon. Then she launches the three. Boy, Jones comes flying out of the pack. We've seen some good defensive effort by both teams. Lauren Cox is muscling her way into position, posting up. Carlton wasn't giving an inch, and Cox just buried herself in the paint for that easy turn to the baseline. And Cox in double figures, Baylor by four. Love the way Baylor is going through the screens. Nothing will deny them. Middleton, what a shot. Jackson fought over the screen, like you said, but Middleton still had enough space to raise up. 15 for Alexa Middleton, the Richard senior out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Landrum, no. That's going to be an offensive foul on Baylor. Great defensive rotation for Iowa State, but look at this. Kim Mulkey had a saying for the competitive nature of Lauren Cox that I can't actually repeat on the air. But she said that she is so competitive inside, and you can see it on display as Milton uses the screen on the other end. Well, Juicy Landrum picked up her third personal foul. She's still in the game working on Jones. And Jones boxes it up and in, and we are knotted at 37. So they go at Landrum with the foul trouble and good patience and poise by the freshman. Cox shows, drives off the glass, has her way. Warren Cox does think she's getting fouled. Iowa State being very physical with her, and she gave the N1 signal after she made that. I don't think the Iowa State or Baylor fans have sat down the entire game. They are into it. This is so much fun. What a great atmosphere. Johnson for three, no. Iowa State only 2 of 12 now for 3. Landrum with a driving right hand. And Baylor can get out and run in a hurry. They know they have such good rebounders. The guards get out. Landrum recognized that opportunity and took advantage. Carlton. On the drive, Richard swats it away with 11 on the shot clock. Lauren Cox, she's got 12 points in the ball game to go along with five rebounds and three assists. Baylor leads by four after hitting their last three. It's that time of the year to look at the NCAA tournament resumes for the Big 12 team. They're the number three RPI conference in the country. Six teams with 21 wins and 10 or more conference wins. Baylor, of course, projected as the number one, number one seed. Iowa State, I think, could bump up to a number three seed with their 10 RPI and eight strength of schedule. Texas likely a sixth seed with their 27 RPI. Kansas State has won eight of their last 10 games. There are only two losses to Baylor in that stretch. And TCU, 10 wins in the Big 12 Conference. They've got wins over Iowa State, Kansas State, West Virginia. Eight of their 10 losses are to teams in the top 35, and they're building on that run to the WNIT last year. And West Virginia, yes, they are a bubble team. They're going to need all the right teams to win, but they got 11 wins in this conference, including Iowa State, Texas, Kansas State, and TCU. They beat everyone above them except Baylor. And so you've got six teams under consideration here in the Big 12 Conference. And Brenda, I would add, as Burkhall hits that shot in the middle of the paint, just with West Virginia alone, because they're really on that bubble, if you have not seen Tiny Smartin for Mike Carey play, it would be a travesty to not see her in the NCAA tournament. He says she is the best shooter he's ever coached. She is spectacular. I think they could even win a game because of the way they play, the style they play, and the prowess of Tiny Smartin. No doubt. It's going to be interesting. Everybody, all six Big 12 teams should be able to get in. Out of bounds. It'll belong to Iowa State. Moon Urson will come into the lineup. Dee Dee Richards will go out for the Lady Bears. Iowa State in this third quarter was five of eight shooting. Cox had the hot hand for Baylor. She had hit three of her last four field goal attempts. Iowa State led early by two. 
Height advantage again over Moon Urson. So Carlton against the quickness of Urson going to be able to post her up and has taken advantage of that matchup a couple of times. And we are tied at 41. Landrum playing with three personal fouls. Cox, turnaround, tough shot, little flat. Urson had it, lost it, got hit in the mouth. Middleton. Nice pass, Jones inside. She walked with it. That's really good defense by Baylor. They completely clogged up the lane. Iowa State was being aggressive. Both Middleton got into the paint and Jones, but there was just nowhere to go. Forty-one, forty-one. Now, Stacy reported after the first quarter. Bill Finley said we just have thirty minutes to go. Well, it's a tie ball game, and they've just got twelve and a half minutes to go now. Absolutely. And, and their practice today was instructive. Bill was not, you know, given the Newt Rockney talk or anything. He was very calm with his team. He loves this team, and that's his words. He said the senior leadership has been outstanding. He said we connected, we've got great chemistry, and you can see it in their practice today. Um, such a great instructor. I mean, it, he oh, yeah. was very clear about how he wanted his team exactly to defend side ball screens, how he wanted to shift into a zone as the clock shot clock wound down, how he wanted to defend the bigs inside. And they are executing that game plan perfectly. Stacy. Well, Ron and Brenda and Bill Fennelly also said from an offensive standpoint, Baylor gets bigger as they stand, so we have to make the move. Good point. You mm -hmm. will not get open standing. So we've seen a very active approach offensively from the Cyclones. Mm -hmm. Brenda. Meredith Burkhall did not hesitate to shoot that ball. Wise seems a little tentative now. We've got a wrestling match on the inside, and Meredith Burkhall will be called for the foul. That'll be her third personal. Burkhall battling the 6'7 All-American, being as physical as she can, trying to keep her off the block. Only 6'3, giving up four inches to Kalani Brown. But battling tough. And here is Kalani Brown on a slide L Louisiana. What a career she has oh. had. Over 2,000 points, over 1,000 rebounds. In her career, that's joining a very elite group in Baylor. Well, she just went over 2,100 points with these free throws for her career. First team all Big 12. And Baylor goes back up by three. So Dee, Dee Richards back in the game now to defend Carlton. And then Cox from behind with a rejection. Just hammered it down from behind and kept it in bounds. That is her second block. Kalani, nice feed. Richards got the glass counted. Hard basket cut by Richards on the double team of Kalani Brown. Final 120 here in the third. Middleton shows. Nice spin move to the hole, oh, Alexa Middleton. Somehow kept her feet spinning and wheeling and dealing inside. What a move. 17 for Middleton, but Baylor is hit four of their last five. What a terrific game. Both these teams battling hard. Cox, no. Poked out to Richards, fresh 30, final 50. Last time these two teams met in the Big 12 final, it was Brittany Griner's senior year in 2013, and it wasn't much of a contest in that game. Baylor won handily, mm -hmm. but this Iowa State team is talented as the, the foul called on Kalani Brown as she hooks Ashley Jones on the roll to the basket. Brown's second personal foul. Middleton, nice drive, fouled by Jackson. She'll go to the line. Alexa Middleton has put this team on her shoulders, and boy, Lauren Cox sure has, sure could make the case. She yeah. was saying jump ball. She reached in and put her hand right on top of the ball. 
Middleton, a 77% free throw shooter. When we first met her last year, she was sitting out after transferring. One of the things Bill Finley told us, she loves the game. She hadn't played for about 18 months prior to this season and was basically chomping at the bit to get out there, and she's been a difference maker for this squad. Lee cut the two. So the shot clock and game clock, only about three-second differential, so Iowa State shifting into their 2-3 zone because they know they're going to wind it down and play for a shot toward the end of the shot clock. Baylor likes shooting with about six because they go for the offensive rebound. Brown buries the shot. Final three seconds. Middleton looks up at the clock, lets it fly just off to the right. Baylor hits five of their last seven shots, but we have got a great game going on at the Big 12 Championship. Baylor leads Iowa State with 10 minutes to play. Last time Baylor was close in the fourth quarter was 2017. That's when Tiny Smartin and company took over, and West Virginia upset the Lady Bears of Baylor in the tournament final. I said, Brenda, we've seen a lot of games. That was one of the most exciting we've been part of. And Tiny, Tiny Smartin was the most outstanding player. She was on fire throughout the tournament, led West Virginia to the victory in 2017. Her brother was in attendance. Kim Mulkey respected Mike Carey's group's performance in that game. But remember, Baylor's won eight of the last nine Big 12 tournament titles. That was the only one in the last nine years they haven't won. But Bill Finley would love to put his team's name in that group that upsets Baylor in a tournament final. Stacy, you were in Iowa State huddle. What was going on? Wow, Coach Finley was fired up. I had goosebumps. I was fired up. He looked at his players and he said, how much fun is this? Everybody is at home watching you guys. You are playing the best gosh darn team in the country straight up. Ten more minutes. Let's play and play the game the way we play it. I heard one pundit say thought that the Big 12 was inflated. He hasn't seen these two teams play in the rest of the tournament. Whoever said that. Jackson. In the Big 12 Conference, the teams play everybody twice. That's an 18-game schedule. And so when you look, and it's the third RPI conference in the country, everybody has to play Baylor twice. Everybody has to play Iowa State twice. And everybody has to play just go on mm -hmm. down the line. It's not one of the unbalanced conferences where you may only have to play the best teams on your home court. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. And when you can get victories in this, and this, since there are six teams with right. 10 or more conference victories, that says a lot about the talent in this conference. I agree. Juicy Landrum just picked up her fourth personal foul. She's got to go out, but Moon Urson has done an outstanding job for Baylor in very trying circumstances two days ago. Her grandfather passed away. Her mom was here at the tournament, and they decided to let Moon Urson play. Now she helps force a five-second call. And once again, our sympathy goes out to Moon Urson and her entire family in Louisiana. Yes. Lead is four. Brown had great position. Scott came over to help. Brown just muscles it up. She's holding her hand, her yeah. wrist, as she goes down the court. And lob it into Wise. Lost it. 17 to shoot. Did Brown get hurt on this play? So she is backing in to get position. Kristen Scott goes to the floor. And she's shaking her left wrist. I didn't see she... I did not see it get hurt. That's a kick. Iowa State will have it. Both team working extensively today on inbounds plays. Scott from deep, the three. Brown, the rebound. Boy, she was open. That was the look that Kristen Scott and Iowa State needed. Carlton went for the steal. Jump ball, possession arrow, Iowa State. Carlton's the one that started that uh, chaos. 
and forced the turnover. Yeah, Carlton came from behind, swooping in, just came hard. That's what Stacey Dales was talking about earlier, the fact that if you're making a decision to bring the double team, you want to do it decisively, and that's what Carlton did and forced the turnover. Iowa State only two three-point field goals made. They averaged nine makes a game overall. Nice job, Dee Dee Richards. Burkhall just is going to just hand it off to Carlton. That is a real heads-up play by Richards. She sniffed that out, used active hands to knock it away and get the steal. Now Burkhall has to guard Urson, but she gives it up to Jackson. Cox with Scott on her. Carlton showed the double, didn't come hard enough, and Cox spins away from it. She is so strong, yes. Lauren Cox. Looks like she got popped in the face, too. 6-0 run by the Lady Bears of Baylor. They lead by eight. Cox making sure the left side of her face is still intact. We'll take a break. Exciting 722 left in Oklahoma City. Baylor by eight. A lot of it courtesy of Lauren Cox here in the second half, Brenda. De defensive player of the year with the block shots, rejecting Carlton, but also getting it done offensively. The aggressive drop step into the paint, even with a double team, turns away. And here, as she goes and rips through, actually got hit in the eye as she ripped through the two defenders, but stayed tough. And I mentioned that Kim Mulkey talked about how competitive this young woman is, mm -hmm. and you can just tell she has turned it up a notch, and she is such a fiery, intense competitor, and she has brought it here in the second half. Well, they looked at the uh, play that Lauren Cox got popped in the face. Nothing was there. Scott, no place to go. Urson, right place, right time. Urson on Middleton. Middleton is going to be called for the block. On the other end, Iowa State likes to dribble in and then pivot and find shooters. And Baylor doing such a good job of covering up. And Middleton tried to hustle ahead and draw the charge. Just didn't quite get there in defensive position before Moon Urson went into her shot. Good hustle play, but good push by Urson to beat her down. Her call goes out. Madison Wise checks back into the lineup for Iowa State. Again, Wise, one of those players has got to get going 0 for 3. Iowa State's got to be careful because Baylor could just explode here in the final 659. By design, they're slow to bring the ball up. That's what they wanted to do from the beginning of the game. Middleton's pull up, tough shot, no. Cox had it, lost it. Iowa State's basketball. Yeah, to your point, Ron, that's what they've been doing on made shots on the other end. They've been letting the ball bounce a couple of times, taking their time to pick it up and inbounding it, just shortening the game, shortening the number, lessening the number of possessions in this game. Carlton. Baylor fans wanted a foul. Iowa State fans got a bucket. That's a good presence of mind by Bridget Carlton. Yeah. He's Richards. Fell out of that one. Richards. Jackson catch, shoot, and make. Chloe Jackson, that's her bread and butter. Using the screen from Lauren Cox so effectively. Six minutes to play. Carlton had an opening. Richards cut it off. Dee Dee Richards had to play catch up and did and forced Carlton into that. Yeah, great, great defense by Dee Dee Richards. Just keeping her in front so long. Such a quick defender. Alani Brown with a big step and rolls it around once and goes down. The lead is 11. Baylor led by 12 in the first. Kalani Brown so good at using her strength. One-on-one, -on -one, she had the size advantage against Carlton. No double team came. And now pickpocketed Jackson. Wise to beat. And she does. 
The Baylor with their biggest lead of the game, Brenda. The team defense of Baylor surrounding Bridget Carlton, forcing the turnover. Kalani Brown in the ball game today. 15 points, seven rebounds, using the muscle. Baylor out a 13-2 run. Oklahoma City, Baylor 59, Iowa State 46. Baylor has made its last five shots. They're on a 6-0 run, and folks, they are a tight-knit bunch. And while this game is important, and they are trying to win the Big 12 finale championship, take a look at this. Together to Tampa. Hashtag TTT. It was Lauren Cox and Kalani Brown that came together before the season, Brenda and Ron, and they came up with this theme. And they decided the mission was Tampa, and they have certainly lived up to it. Absolutely. Once again, they won titles in 2005, 2012. They're hoping that seven-year stretch holds true again. Bridget Carlton on that last miss came up limping. Here it is again. Carlton looked like Whoa. she might have caught Kalani Brown's foot as she came down. That's the last thing you want in this game is to have anybody injured as they are preparing for NCAA tournament play. Baylor has just been pounding it on the inside. 71%, 42 to be exact points. But Baylor has not been back to the Final Four since they won in 2012. And that together to Tampa. That is the theme because this is the number one team in the country. Ever since they beat UConn, they secured that spot and have held on, have not lost since then. They're only lost this year to Stanford, who congratulations to Tara Vanderveer and Stanford. They won the Pac-12 tournament title last night over Oregon. How uh, good did Notre Dame look, too, by the way? Yeah, Notre Dame with a big win over Louisville. And then Megan Gustafson with a 45-point effort to lead Iowa over Maryland in the Big Ten Championship. It's that time of year. Absolutely. Middleton, Richards on her, and Richards will be called for the foul. That'll be her first personal foul. The success of this Baylor program is amazing. They run the table in the regular season for the second consecutive year. 18-0, fourth time overall. Cox ties it up. Possession arrow, the Lady Bears of Baylor. Iowa State looks a little worn down. And even though both teams so. have played three games in three consecutive days, Baylor was able to rest their players just a little bit more in each of their two games. And they look like the fresher team here in the fourth quarter, and they also look like the number one team in the country just taking care of business down the stretch. Richards just out fights everybody, and they'll set it up again. And Bill Fenley said he needed more from his bench before the Texas game and before this game. Burkhall's giving them a little bit. They needed more. Jackson rejected by Madison Wise. And it's off Jackson. Wise was able to get the block, and they're saying that she hit it off Jackson. Jackson's shaking her head, though. And they'll go the other way. Ninth consecutive 30-win season for the Lady Bears of Baylor, trying to get to 31 and extend their win streak to 22, and in the process, get another title. Jones has it slapped away. Nice job by Cox trying to keep it alive, and it'll be Baylor's ball. Good hustle by Lauren Cox once again, just taking command, taking control. 8-0 run by the Lady Bears. They've hit five of their last seven shots. And this time of transfers, teams, players transferring from school to school, two real impact transfers in this game, both at the point guard position. Chloe Jackson, graduate transfer from LSU. Alexa Middleton transferring from Tennessee, making a big impact on both these teams. 
Jackson extends the lead and the run. Iowa State scoreless the last three and a half. Listen to the Baylor fans. The lead is pushed to 17. Biggest to the ball game for the Lady Bears of Baylor. This is a reaction after Chloe Jackson hit that shot. Refuse the screen, step back, toes on the line, and the reaction from the bench. They know how hard this team has had to work. Iowa State pushed them for three quarters, but they have outscored Iowa State 15 to two here in the fourth. And if Baylor wins, it would be their 20th Big 12 championship regular season and tournament combined. Richards ties up, possession arrow. Will belong to Iowa State. Still, the thing is, you've got Iowa State that can shoot the three. They've only made two. It's their strength that these two teams have played each other twice before, and Baylor has taken away that strength. That's and, a big shot, though, by Scott. And that's a three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Needed that. And like you said, Anytime you have the weapon of a three-point shot, you're never completely out of a game, but Baylor going to use as much time as they can on every possession here down the stretch. Kim Mulkey putting up the sign to slow it down. She sees she's two minutes and 15 seconds away from another title. Urson baseline hangs mm -hmm. off the glass counted. There's that leaping ability. She's got a 32-inch vertical leap at only 5'6". She went over three Cyclone defenders that time. She tried to dunk it today and shoot around, showing us her hops. Carlton is down and is just hobbling. Bridget Carlton does not look good for Iowa State. Iowa State... Just with two team fouls now, three team fouls, so another to give here. If Iowa State stays at three, three-point field goals made, that will be the fewest they have made this season. Four was the previous low, and Carlton's going to go out. And she'll get an applause from the Iowa State fans. What a gutty performance. Her Iowa State career far from over, obviously. She has been a pleasure to watch since she has been in Ames, Iowa. Bill Finley bending over his seniors, talking to them. So proud, I'm sure, of the effort that they gave today. He said the seniors on this team saved the program and probably his coaching career. <laughs> That'll be a foul down low. That'll be a... Ray, jo Ray Johnson. That's Bridget Carlton's mom and dad coming from Chatham, Ontario, Canada. Stacy Dale's new best friends. <laughs> and now Kim Mulkey will empty her bench. Jackson with 14 to shoot. 60 seconds left. Baylor on their way to another Big 12 Tournament Championship. Jackson, yes! <laughs> Kim Mulkey coached Kalani Brown's mom at Louisiana Tech. And now she's lifted up by Kalani Brown as they celebrate another conference championship. And this will be her 698th win as a player and a coach playing at Louisiana Tech. Smith comes in, Bickle comes out, and the freshman Smith gets a hug. She is going to be a superstar for the Lady Bears. 14 to three run. You got to tip your hat, though, to Iowa State. They hung with the number one team in the country for three and a half quarters. And they played hard. They hit shots. They played excellent defense throughout. But the Lady Bears took over here in the fourth quarter and made it their championship. This will be their 10th tournament title. 
The shot, no. Final 12 seconds. <laughs> Kim Bulky said, don't shoot it. Let the celebration begin. The Lady Bears are the 2019 Big 12 Tournament Champions.